In this video, we will discuss the relationship between groundwater and surface water and the effect one another has on water quantity and quality. The relationship between surface water and groundwater is more intimate than most people understand. The base flow in all streams and rivers is seepage from groundwater resources, and when rivers are above base flow, they are replenishing groundwater reserves. This ebb and flow relationship is constant and connects the two water sources directly. Groundwater that is contaminated by a septic leak will eventually contaminate any nearby surface water, just as surface water contaminated by an industry will seep into adjacent aquifers. Since groundwater is difficult to measure compared to surface water, those who create policy and legislation often neglect the relationship between the two. Streams can interact with groundwater in three ways. They can be a gaining stream, where the stream gains water from inflow of groundwater through the stream bed. They can be a losing stream, where water is lost by outflow through the stream bed. Or more commonly, they do both, losing in some reaches and gaining in others. Whether a stream is gaining or losing depends on the altitudes of the water table and stream water surface. When the altitude of the water table is higher than the stream surface, the stream will gain. When the altitude of the surface water is higher than the water table, then the stream will lose. Lakes interact in the same three different ways. However, water levels in lakes do not change as rapidly, evaporation has a greater effect, and lake sediments typically have larger volumes of organic deposits than streams. In some streams, gain or loss is persistent. However, some streams will have varying flow directions that can change quickly, resulting in focused recharge near the stream bank. This interaction takes place in nearly all streams at some point, and the rapid rise in stream stage causes water to move from the stream into stream banks. This is known as bank storage. Overpumping of wells can lower nearby lake levels and reduce stream flow in adjacent streams, having significant effects on ecosystems and water quality. Very often, surface water seepage into adjacent aquifers is more than was being pumped out of the aquifer making surface water the dominant source of water to wells pumping from those aquifers. Overpumping can affect surface water supply to a point that fish habitats are reduced and riparian vegetation is lost. As mentioned previously, lakes can gain or lose water through its entire bed or most often gain in some parts and lose in others. The chemistry of groundwater and the direction and magnitude of the exchange with lake surface water significantly affects the chemistry of the lake. Often groundwater is the principal source of dissolved chemicals to a lake, even when groundwater contributes a small portion of the lake's water budget. Pumping can change flow patterns and can alter natural input of vital constituents such as dissolved oxygen and nutrients and thus harming lake biota. Changes in flow direction caused by pumping affects temperature, oxygen levels, and nutrient concentrations of streams and rivers and can harm riparian habitats that support fish and other wildlife. Decrease of stream flow because of groundwater pumping will be of greatest concern during periods of low flow, particularly during droughts as the base flow of rivers and streams come from groundwater. Pumping decisions today will affect surface water availability and quality in the future. However, these effects may not be recognized for many years. The inevitable decrease in surface water supply because of groundwater development will further complicate the administration of water rights. While some parts of the western United States regulate groundwater development because of their effects on surface water rights, no water laws recognize the physical connection between groundwater and surface water. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, the biggest hindrance to including groundwater in policy is the difficulty involved in measuring groundwater. With great advances in water science and technology, more groundwater data will be available in the near future. USGS has developed the Next Generation Water Observing System, NGWOS, which will provide real-time data on water quantity and quality more affordably and efficiently. This new system is generating integrated data on stream flow, groundwater, evapotranspiration, snowpack, soil moisture, water quality, and water use. The NGWOS utilizes fixed and mobile monitoring assets in the water, ground, and air, including innovative webcams and new ground and space-based sensors. When fully implemented, the NGWOS will intensively monitor at least 10 medium-sized watersheds, making up 10,000 to 20,000 square miles and underlying aquifers that represent larger regions across the nation. The pilot site is in the Delaware River Basin and began in 2018. The Upper Colorado River Basin and Illinois River Basin have been added in the past two years. With emergent technology and advancement in groundwater monitoring, a more ambitious approach to improving law and policy could be pursued 
by developing new laws and policies that connect groundwater and surface water interactions. This can be done by expanding environmental protections for surface water laws to groundwater, like the public trust doctrine. This would require the preparation and implementation of local groundwater management plans, including in-stream and ecological elements, beginning with areas experiencing a threshold level of groundwater and surface water depletion.